Architecture Codex. If you want to see more, like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe. The two most important sports arenas ever built in architecture history are the Colosseum, officially known as the Flavian Amphitheater, and the Houston Astrodome, officially known as the Harris County Domed Stadium. From a design collaboration including structural engineer Walter Moore, architects Lloyd Morgan, and others, it was the first domed outdoor sports arena ever built when it opened in 1965. The Houston Astrodome was a major structural advancement. Covering almost 400,000 square feet, it surpassed by almost five times the area of Nerve's Palazzo della Sport at 85,000 square feet, which was built for indoor sports at the 1960 Rome Olympics. I examined Nerve's other Rome dome, Palazzetto della Sport, in Architecture Codex video number 52. With an overall diameter of 642 feet, more than twice the length of a football field, the Astrodome needed to withstand live loads, dead loads, wind loads, hurricane forces, and even sonic booms, as the engineers were anticipating the supersonic jet age coming soon. The structural design chosen from other options was the lamella-type structure, named for a mushroom framework and is often seen in engineered wood. But here, it would be constructed of open web steel trusses over five feet deep. Lamella roofs consist of intersecting arches that ultimately form the vault and which visually look like interconnecting rhombuses. The interlocking of each section around the rhombus shape gives the dome structure amazing redundancy, distributing loads in all directions, not just downward improving its ability to sustain lateral forces in addition to gravity. The dome still had the problem faced by the classic round Roman arch, and that is where the arch meets the base, there's an outside lateral thrust. Here, the very old technique of a tension ring was used. A tension ring can tug on itself when a force from the side exerts pressure, and thus it balances the stresses. In some ancient domes, they would forge a large iron chain. For the Astrodome tension ring, they constructed another truss with 14-inch deep steel I-beams on the top and bottom, each weighing over 300 pounds per linear foot. The truss is 5 foot 6 inches deep, and the two I-beams are connected by steel struts, both vertically and on an angle. By the way, the Astrodome structure was one of the first buildings tested in a wind tunnel. Steel is excellent in tension, and since the industrial age, it has revolutionized how buildings and bridges get built. And steel trusses, which are beautiful expressions of the physics, allow the steel to do even more. You have seen them everywhere, on bridges, in buildings, but do you know why steel trusses are particularly efficient? Think of a conventional beam or joist spanning any given distance. Now put a load on the center of that beam, and you will understand why it deflects, why it sags in the middle. When a beam deflects, the materials are distorted with compression, pushing pressure on the top, and tension, pulling pressure on the bottom. Somewhere between the top and the bottom, as the beam goes from compression to tension, there is a place where the beam is not distorted and the forces are neutral. Now, if you take out the material where the forces are neutral, you can save both the material and the dead weight it has, as long as the top and the bottom cords are attached enough times and work together. You can do this in wood, you can do this in steel, or many other combinations of materials. Once again, the greater the separation between the top and the bottom cord, the deeper the truss, the stronger it is. By the way, I've heard the Houston Astrodome referred to as a geodesic dome. It is not. Lamella is a completely different concept. While both obey the same laws of physics, Buckminster Fuller's geodesic domes generally have a hexagon pattern subdivided into equilateral triangles and with a more shallow depth for the components, 
which are often tubes. Complicating the erection of the astrodome was the constant varying temperatures of both the dome elements and the temporary towers constructed to assemble the dome. When temperatures get higher, steel will expand. Prefabricated triangular sections were lifted in place opposite each other, completing a full arch at the same time so temporary stresses would be as balanced as possible. The jacks supporting the dome during construction were then slowly lowered and the dome monitored to make sure all the pieces, including the 72 steel support columns, were working properly together. Still, with the temperature and load variations, the dome could deflect downward almost two inches and outward at the base as much as five inches in all directions. So interfacing the dome with the other elements hung from it and surrounding it also required careful engineering. Testing confirmed the performance was as calculated and the structure was a complete success. With a dome then, the interior playing field and the stands are protected from the weather. For Houston, the issue was not cold or rain, but the blazing hot summer weather, which makes baseball both hard to play and hard to watch. Whereas the dome for the Montreal Olympic Stadium, Architecture Codex video number 56, was designed to keep out the cold. Like any new endeavor, the success of the Astrodome came with unforeseen consequences. The stadium was built for the expansion baseball team, the Houston Astros. The Astros is a reference to the Greek word astron, meaning star, which is a reference to the command center, the mission control of NASA, the U.S. space agency working to put an American astronaut, Greek for star sailor, on the moon. When it originally opened, the dome had skylights, allowing the sun into the stadium to naturally light it. But the bright skylights contrasted with the dark trusses of the dome and created a lot of glare, which made it difficult for an outfielder to follow a fly ball. To fix that problem, they painted all the skylights. With a dark background, it was easier to track the ball arcing overhead. But now with no sunlight, the natural grass on the field began to die. Uh, had a problem. So the next innovation was necessary, an artificial grass plane surface. It was a short pile artificial fiber invented by Monsanto and it was used a couple of places before it was famously installed at the Astrodome and rebranded AstroTurf. The original surface was installed over concrete which made for bouncier and faster balls, increasing the difficulty of fielding. Even batters trying to place a hit needed to make adjustments. AstroTurf could be credited with improving some players' statistics and decreasing other players' performance. This was acceptable, particularly since baseball players are not usually falling on the ground. But the concrete substrate was not good for football. Over the years, they developed other substrates, and we could see that artificial turf expanded greatly with different brands and substrates that now usually consists of perhaps 12 inches of rubberized pellets to better simulate the softness of soils. You can often see a cloud of pellets puff up from the artificial turf when a player might fall or pound the field with his feet, knee, or butt. The Houston Astrodome was one of those buildings in my youth that inspired me that the future was coming soon. It combined both futuristic architecture and space exploration in one building. And as a model rocketeer, I remember that in 1969, at the Blue Bonnet Bowl, the Estes Model Rocket Company launched one of their rockets inside the Astrodome. They wrote about how they had to make a special solid propellant engine, i.e. packed gunpowder, to make sure their Saturn V model would not hit the roof. So I had wanted to visit the Astrodome and attend an event there for a long time. But like a lot of the icon buildings I wanted to visit, by the time I got there, it was closed, and I couldn't even get inside. In 1997, the Houston Oilers football team moved from Houston to Nashville, and in 2000, the Astros moved to a new stadium, once called Enron, now Minute Maid Field. In 2008, the building officially closed. It has escaped demolition, but plans to refurbish it or repurpose it have been repeatedly rejected. Sentiment protected it until 2017, when it was finally declared a state landmark, 
and officially protected from demolition. But whether it will be used again remains a question. Like Montreal's Olympic Stadium, or Nerve's smaller Palazzetto della Sport, the building sits quietly, waiting for someone with enough love and money to give it a purpose and bring it back to life. In the history of outdoor sports, the Houston Astrodome represents a seminal moment, both the first attempt in order to enclose both the field and the stands, but also the accidental innovation of producing a different kind of playing surface for professional sports. So it deserves preservation, but it is too soon to turn the Astrodome into a museum unto itself, like the Colosseum. But apparently gladiatorial games are completely out of the question. So some other purpose has to be found in order to use the stadium. But it is necessary to do this because the Astrodome represents both the glory and hubris of humanity, and in this case, a special kind of human, a Texas human, who are the kind of people who will not let weather decide when they play their games. The Astrodome started the trend of technology removing the randomness of nature from the game. With domes, no longer is weather a factor. A rain delay or a baseball game being called after five innings is no longer something that might require a different strategy. And the excitement of watching football players covered in mud trying to run or pass in the rain, or even seeing them in swirling snow, is removed completely as a possibility. In the movie Bull Durham, catcher Crash Davis gets into the head of up-and-coming pitcher Nuke Lelouch by expanding on a very familiar and old sports adage. So much so that later in the movie, when being interviewed by a reporter, Nuke will say, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and sometimes it rains. But with dome stadiums inspired by the Houston Astrodome, that basic understanding of life that baseball taught us, that not everything has an absolute ending, that sometimes things can be very ambiguous, might just be lost forever. I'm Michael Molinelli, and this is Architecture Codex. Thank you.